Another story, this is probably one that really, that I just will always remember is, I remember getting transferred into this area and there was this investigator who we'd been working, who they had been working with. And I found out his story and his story is just one of the most amazing things I've ever heard. And he, he's actually a deacon in the Roman Catholic church in this small town of about 12,000 people. And he, one night he had this dream where in his dream, God told him to follow Christ more closely, follow my servant, Joseph, who was given the gold plates. And he woke up and just was kind of disoriented, wasn't sure what the dream was about. And so he, you know, over the course of time, he looked through the scriptures and the only Joseph he could find was Joseph in Egypt. And he didn't, he couldn't find anything about gold plates. And it always just was on the back of his mind. And one day he was just flipping through the channels and he heard the words gold plates. And so he stopped and it turns out it was BYU TV. He stopped on BYU TV and there was one of those scripture discussions. And so he started watching and listening and he soon realized that it was the Mormons. And so he said, Oh, I, I can't do that. And so he turned it off and just kind of put it away. And then, but it, it never left him. He still had that, those feelings and he knew that something had to be done. And he owned some apartments or he managed some apartments close to the temple. And so he would drive by there all the time. And there's in this LDS bookstore that, well, it, I'm, I'm assuming it's still there. I don't know. It was there when I was there and it was, uh, just, short, you know, so a little distance down the road from the temple. And he walked in one day, he just got the courage to walk in. And the first thing he saw was this cardboard standup of Joseph Smith holding the gold plates. And he knew at that point that that's, that was his answer. And so he bought his own scriptures right then and just read through all the standard works. He read through a marvelous work and a wonder and Talmadge and just read everything he could. And he showed up to church one day and my companion before who with his other, before we were together, just went up to him and introduced himself. And he was in a shirt and tie and he was in one of those ties that had the like hieroglyphs from the uh, Pearl of, or from the book of Abraham. And so he just went up to him and just introduced himself and asked where he was visiting from. He said, Oh, I'm, I'm actually from here in Hudson. I'm not a member, but I'm thinking about joining your church. And that's just one of those things that you love to hear. And you don't hear very often, but it was just kind of a remarkable story. And then, uh, he just ate everything up and he wanted to get baptized. But one day his, his wife just, uh, kind of put the kibosh on, on the whole thing. And so it was a, a long process, a really long process. And when I was with him, we were able to meet and he'd take us out to, to lunch at sandwich shops and we would teach and use it up as an opportunity to continue to help him to build up his spirits and help him to know that everything is on the Lord's time frame. And uh, when I was actually there, I was transferred and he hadn't been baptized yet, but I was really grateful for the opportunity a few months after that to go to his baptism. His wife uh, eventually just said, you, you look like a Mormon, you talk like one, you might as well just be one. And so I went to his baptism, his baptism, and it was just one of the most amazing experiences I've ever been to. And I remember right after he had come out of the water, he just said, I'm no longer a dry Mormon. And it was one of those experiences I'll cherish and remember forever that, uh, you know, Bernie was able to go through these things. And he's one of my, the people I really look up to in this life. So.